Welcome to Factorio Reverse Megabase. My name is Nila, and so this is episode 44 of our Let's Play campaign. We have uh, completed all of the science parts. There are some things that are not great, and down here, this is one of the things you've mentioned in the comment section, so really appreciate it that uh, they, my lane bouncer here is not actually lane bouncing because I forgot to replace that. So that means we don't have any iron, we don't have anything, so that's pretty miserable. So let me just uh, fix that. And boom, that gets a bit more up, but our main problem is still the fact that these trains are, uh, yeah, not really working very well. So that's uh, that's that, that's unfortunate, but still, it's how much is on this train? Not much, eight thousand. So what I wanted to show you was actually that I have fixed <laughs> fixed the issue uh, of these ones being full, and uh, I'll just uh, show you how I did it. Instead of on the inside belt here. Uh, I've set this one to override 10 and this one to override 8 and voila, it works. You see these two are super stable and then we have no problem at all and this one will get better soon, soon-ish, yes. I don't care about this one, we can always look at it at a later time. I am going to run with my uh, race suit on here. I'm going to run all the way over here to our new location where we're going to build for today. So with all the science, except for the military science done, what do we have remaining to do? Well, we have three big things remaining to do in this base. One is making power for the entire base. That's what we're going to get started on now. The second one is fueling the trains. And the third one is military science. So those things are still left on the to-do to do list in order for us to have a fully vanilla base of a uh, for 3,000 signs per minute, and then we'll be starting on this. So I will not take my race suit on here. Well, nuclear power, it is. It's not gonna be uh, solar power because uh, it's honestly, it's just too boring. If I put solar panels, uh, then I just have to put it out here and just make a massive thing. It could look good, but it, it'll also just be like looking at the robots fly all the time. I think it's much more interesting to look at nuclear reactors and nuclear power. So what we're going to do is to start with some math. Yay! We all love that part. That's why we play the game. Uh, we can do many different setups. This, we should start by looking at how much power we actually use. We're consuming 16 gigawatts of power and it certainly can get bigger, but not much. So probably going to be like 20 gigawatts of power would be my guess. So how would we get 20 gigawatts of power? Well, I think that there are some different options and the option I like the most. Now in this space, I have designed it so that, or during the generation, I've designed it so that there is no, uh, there's no big water piles. You can see there's just a bit of pond here and there. And that means right now, the way I would suggest you do it in your own base is to find a giant lake and then just landfill, but leave spaces open for liquids. I can't do that, so I'm gonna have to do something else. Uh, so we are gonna have to cheat a bit and uh, make our sort of dig some trenches for the water. We have some different options. I have my, uh, if I look at my masterclass, I have the different versions. I have my, uh, that's actually kind of funny that it's so insistent on the grid. It kind of is. Uh, is there any way I can build it without it conflicting with anything? All right, well, just go out here and build it somewhere out in the wild. So this is kind of my no, normal one. Uh, if I want to build a mega base, I put eight of these here. It gives us 1,120 nuclear uh, megawatts of power. Pretty good, it takes 10 pumps in, but it doesn't scale. So we could do this, but on the other hand, if we did this, it's kind of, uh, oh, let's turn the other around. Couldn't we do something better? So we're going to go into some silly uh, design part of trying to make something that's fully tileable. I know it's been done. I have never done it. So I think it's going to be fun to do. We'll uh, give it a shot. What I also want to do, let's pick up all of this, is to s figure out how much we want. So let's see if we have, that's actually what I wanted to say. If we had like a perpetual row of nuclear reactors, then we can look at the theoretical power here. This will have uh, three neighborhood bonuses. What? Go away with that. It'll have three neighborhood bonuses and that means it produces 
Oh dear, why? How do I do this? This is four. Each of these reactors will then produce instead of forty, it'll produce forty plus one, two, three. It's gonna be four times four, so one hundred and sixty megawatts for each row. So each row here will produce uh, three hundred and twenty. And of course, the last ones out here will not work. So basically, what we look at is if I can make something that tiles completely like this, then I'm going to get 3,000. I'm thinking, all right, I'm thinking, then I get 320 for this part. Oops. And if I then assume that they fully go fully out, then this will be here. That's 1.6 gigawatt. That's going to be 3.6, 3.2 gigawatts of power. So just so we can see, this is uh, 3.2 gigawatts of power. Just to get a sense, that's 6.4. I'm better at doubling. Here, that's 12.8. <laughs> and now, uh, if we do then one more, one more doubling. And then we get this size here, which is going to be 25.6 gigawatts of power. So that's just uh, getting a sense of the size of this if we want to make it. So not actually a big size sort of in the grand scheme of things, but of course it's going to stretch very far to both sides. So that's just uh, so something we want to do and it'll be slightly less because the top ones here don't have enough. I think I did that correct. I don't think we can uh, go. So, okay. this. Um, that will just be a sense of, uh, of of scale of this. I don't even want to do this. It's do I do I? I don't like the blinking. We'll just build this. Me picking up is just then it generates an extra stack. There. Okay, that didn't hurt so much. That gives us a sense of the scale of everything we want. And let's go back. So this is one of the things we need to generate or to design. It's going to take it more than one episode. The other one is figuring out if I am consuming, if I have, see now this is why it's important, 160. If I have 160 reactors operating, then I am going to every, they're going to use 160 fuel every 200 seconds. So we divide by 200 seconds. What does that give us? That gives us the whole entire thing consumes 0 0.8 nuclear fuel per second. Isn't that just absolutely insanely low? So we'll just count backwards. And if I do my fuel here, the fuel, and of course it's going to be productivity module. So it's the recipe here is one, Uranium in for 10 fuel out. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 10 fuel out. Yes, 10 fuel out. So we divide by 14. Why 14? Because we want to, we have the 1.4 productivity and the fact ratio of 10. So we divide by 14. We are now talking about 0 0.06 uranium 235 per second. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you can see the absurdity of uranium already now. It's, and of course, I might do a factor 10 or 20 or 100 or off. And it's still like some completely... Oh, I'm keep pressing X. I wonder what game is uh, it is that I press X to delete. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get these out. So what I need is obviously absolutely pretty much nothing inbound. So I'm going to build something here that's going to do take care of the processing and going to take care of the... Coverex process. I'm going to do a new Coverex process that I've done once before because it suddenly occurred to me, hey, there must be a really cool way to do this. So let's see if I can, uh, I can replicate it sort of ad hoc. The idea is I have two different versions. I have one that is circuit controlled and some people say it's a bit flimsy. It is not, but I can understand it's things that rely on counting how much goes in and out. If it's, uh, if there's ever a brownout or something, then things just go wrong. So um, I can understand that the other one takes a lot of belts and it just fills up belts and it's just not really pretty. So what I think is better is to try to have a design that is fully moduled. That means you need uh, the maximum number of modules here. 
that is here. 12 modules. Can we do it? But basically, the question is, can I do a Comorex build that is tileable, has 12 beacons, does not rely on circuits? That's a pretty uh, steep, uh, steep bar to set. But, you know, we're up for it, right? I don't know if I want to set it here. I don't know. We'll, we'll try. And then... So, what am I going to go in? So, I want something... Uh, that's not it. I want something coming in here. This will be the Uranium-238, the dark green one. And we're going to get this one. And I will definitely sort of go through and just jump onwards to the next one. So far, so good. And you're going to pick up from this location. Mm -hmm. And you might actually be picking up very slowly. Because you don't want to be filling this one up too fast. And then on the outside of this one, you're going to take the Uranium 235, uh, 238 out here, which will just shove back in here. Very, very simple thing here. We can put some boxes, but I don't really like that. Maybe, yeah, if you don't like things on the ground, then this is better. So the essence of this is <clears throat> when this one completes one cycle, <clears throat> sorry, then uh, let's look at over here. Then it will need more uranium-238 than it actually outputs. So it outputs two and it needs five in. So I want to make sure that the two that goes out gets sort of recycled back in here. That's why I'm taking a slower one here instead of the faster one. That should be good. So this one should take care of our uranium-235 or 238. And I'm going to just uh, feed a line in here with just on the one side of it. There. That is good. Now, that was the easy one. And I think I don't want this one. So let's... Uh, take. So the next one is the output side. So I want to make sure that I'm going to output more of the uranium-238 than I actually need. But I have to remember that I should still need some. So what if I just do something like this? Here. That's it. Right? I'm going to get some uranium-238 just to see if it works. And that means basically we can take this one out here and we can put it in a box if we like. That's what we like. Or put it in some other place. And yay, random things. And we do just need to get it seeded. That's not a big deal. Uh, actually, it is a big deal because I can't really seed it without having a fake chest. So I'm just going to generate a chest for that. Yep. Infinite filter. That one. Take that out. And I'm going to put this in here. Even take it out like this. Then let's see if it, it works like this. Might be some that passes through. I'm not sure. Oh. It filters there. Yeah, so it doesn't work quite like this yet. Almost. But not quite. So this one has to filter... Um, where is it? Oh, there. That one. That's always a good filter to have. Right. So I'm thinking... Hold on. Oh, we could make it even better. Right? We could make it even better. Let's try that. Alright. Let's take this out. Get half of it in here. I'm going to take this out. And then see how much gets picked up. They should be the same inbounds outbounds here. Whatever puts in can be taken out. Take it in. Take it in. Take it in. There. Yep. So now it has accrued one in here. I can make it even better. Because usually you will have some kind of seeding material here. And if we put that on the outside belt. Only on the outside belt. Then it will pick this up for as long as it's there. But the inside will be put... This one will be put on the inside belt. And the inside belt 
will always be picked up first. So it'll always try to pick this up, but then of course send something onwards. You can see now it's working. Everything that gets in gets picked up. We are going to watch it just a few times to see when it actually lets something pass through to, uh, to the other side. I'm going to pick this one up so we know when it happens. See, now it goes to 79, and then it'll go to 80. And then we wait for the productivity, 80. And after it goes to 80, maybe 82, 83, then it won't pick up anything anymore. And it'll let something slide past. All right, 81. We're going to make it. We're going to see it go to 82. It's usually 82, but it may be like a bit more. And then it'll go like, yeah, I don't want to pick up anymore. All right. That's going to be the last one. That's going to be the last one. Thank you, Autosave. Keeping us safe. Let something slide. Go like, no. You keep going. All right. Well, that was another productivity that went jump to 84. At some point, it's going to let something go by. Oh, right. It's actually when it it doesn't need to pick up anyone. There we go. See? It now passed on some more. Boom. We have in this one five extra. Those are already generated. That was the one condition was, is it, is it working? Yes, it is. The next one, is it tileable? And let's see. Obviously, we're going to take all of this out. And here. And again, we want to make sure that, of course, you need to either seed it from here or seed it with whatever sort of overflows from this one and goes in. So let's uh, just seed it here with some extra materials. So they go through. They won't be able to pick up all of it, but they'll pick up enough, hopefully, to get started. Oops. And we can now switch this off. So it just represents that you have some overflow from your uranium processing, and then it goes through here. And we have all of these operational. I'd actually like to see this just uh, continue out here. Just continue out here and put it into a box instead. So there you have it. That's a new uranium, uh, new Coverex process setup that is tileable, 12 beaconable, and it is also uh, no circuits at all. And another thing that it is, it's very far tileable because as you see, nothing flows between these unless it's needed. This one just keeps the belt full. This one, it's only the surplus that goes through. So the only time that it stops being scalable is when the surplus from your generation here is more than uh, more than half a belt, which is absolutely insane. All right, so that gives us just an idea about, this gives us an idea, how much is that per second? Well, we are just producing 0 0.13 per second for one of these, which is enough to, if you can remember our calculations from previously, is enough to feed 500 uh, uranium uh, reactors. Actually, it's the exact number is 700 something, but it's absolutely insane. Just one of these, you can feed two of these, more than two of these. So <clears throat> we don't need a lot of Coverex. We don't actually need Coverex at all, but we're going to set it up because now we have it. So the other thing that we want to do is do some mine, some uh, some processing. We're going to tap this one, this uranium deposit, and we're going to get some sulfuric acid inbound, which is kind of annoying. We can also do that one because it's close to some water and some crude oil. So we we'll just make a little hack up here. And then you go like, oh, you had a little hack? What? This is supposed to be a mega base. Yes, my friends, it is. But these 18 million will last us for an infinity and then another infinity on top of it. So the whole idea of, of just of building uranium or nuclear to to scale it's just absolutely in absurd it's uh it's so poorly balanced it's just unbelievable and it's if it, i don't know i i just think it's so silly that there's so much uranium in the world and it's used for so little and you just end up with tons and tons of it and nothing to spend it on do we have a little sulfuric acid plant uh, if we mine this we're actually going to well, mining productivity doesn't affect the amount of urine, uh, amount of sulfuric acid we need. But I know we have a little teeny tiny sulfuric acid plant attached right there. So all we need is one of these little things. Boop. And let's see, where's the water coming from? I want to point the water exactly at the right location. There we go. This is the water one. 
And I will need my... Yes, perfect. So, we have water. We have definitely enough of this. And we're going to get some power out here. Are we going to get some proper power line? Yes, we are. So let's get that from... There. Got it. This is now how much oil does it take? It takes 170 per second. And one of these with modules and beacons is probably going to generate way more than that. Don't even want so many. And this one, how much is it just generating? It's, um, this is generating 100 and this one can consume, yeah, a bit more than 100 and it outputs nine. Let's call it nine. This one consumes seven. I'll put 100 uranium here. The only thing we're missing is actually some iron, and I have that down here. I know that I know that you're 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 just you're probably not liking this. Why? What is this one's? Oh, right, 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 right. Why do I put it in here and then there? That's really weird. Wonder what the lo oh right because of uh, the productivity mod the speed modules here. I want some speed modules to keep up. Oh, if only I could click here and then click here and then it would draw like an L shape for where I wanted it. Oh, wait, that's another game. That's another one. And let's get this one in. Actually, I think I want to cut this out. Go back. I mean, it might as well fit with this grid. There. I'll just take you out. Go get this one. I have no idea how far I need to go down. A bit further, but not much. And we rush down here to get some iron set up. And I really don't need more. I know that you may think that this is weird, but it, there's really no point in making things more complicated than they have to. And this really doesn't need to be complicated. Here. We go up and it's gonna be hitting the other one pretty closely. Don't need beacons, modules, anything. I think the productivity of 96 will take care of actually producing enough. Where are we at? Yeah, it's almost a full belt like this. And that's certainly more than this one can, can actually process. And this one can process what is needed. So we have everything at the ratio we need here. All we need is a bit of oil. And I'm just going to get some power pole for this. Just to get a sense of it. Does it tell me how much I get? Uh, yeah, 14,000 per, yeah, that's probably enough. I'm going to go with that's probably enough. <laughs> yeah, the quantities are pretty silly. The only question I have now for myself mainly is whether I have enough sulfuric acid to get all the stuff I need. But I think I do. There. Boom. Oil is working getting in there this one's stuck and is our yep our belt is coming and then we have some here we are going to put that into a little box because obviously we are again we don't really need a lot we're going to wait for this one to just to see if it's actually coming in and then we're going to set up a mining operation for the uranium just to get the uranium uranium into our little smelter and then we'll build a smelter and then we'll build a Corex for now. Ah. Yeah. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, hold on a minute. You also need iron for this part. But I'm still talking about we need each craft here. We need 0 0.8 of the finished product per second. So I need one iron per second 
at most for this build. I'm not going to take a train of 64,000 iron in. That's going to last, let me do the math, 64,000 seconds. I don't even know what 64,000 seconds is. So this is the part that I, that you can probably hear that it, it bothers me a bit with um, with uranium, that the numbers are so silly. So that's 18 hours with just one train. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it bothers me a bit with uranium, how silly the numbers are and how efficient it is because it, it, it means that there's really, even in, if you're building a mega base, that it's, it's just no point in optimizing it because it's, yeah, so silly numbers. Uh, we're going to set up a full mining operation on this one. Again, not because we need it, but because uh, it, we might as well. Yeah. All right, get that out. Yeah, and ah, much nicer. Kill this part. And we bring in the oil. What? I don't have it? Oh, I do have it now. That's not necessary, by the way. But we like it like this. And I'll get... I don't have pumps there. Pump here. And... Pump here. There you go. And all we need now is... Oh, that's funny. Why the two? Don't know. And I'm gonna get a power line like this again. That's perfect. And it fires this one. Everyone's good. And I can just take this into a little belt here. I think two belts will be enough. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can get four belts. No, it's higher density, but still. Let's see if I can make a balancer this time around. That was the one I was missing. Yeah, I got two. And these can now be dragged down here if if, when, and I need it, like something like this, right? There. All right, I guess I'll just run this, uh, this back. So now we have uranium being processed back here. I'm I'm actually thinking this entire thing is going to do nothing but um, but the processing and this part, and then it'll be either trained out to wherever we want to build our nuclear power plants. But it's not really going to use much. So let's um, let's build a bit of the smelting part. Oh, that's a lot of weird crap we have in our inventory now. Uh, that probably don't need this one either. All right, let's do some smelting and just get a sense of how much I can do. Again, this one. And what I just need to do is consume two belts like this. I think the easiest way to consume as much as possible is to take one in and one out. It's going to take 10 inbounds and one outbound. So it, quantity-wise, it's pretty simple and I'm gonna do productivity I don't know why I would want that it's just for good measure I guess and just kill these I want to build it here so I can get modules on either side there 
and that should give us also an indication of how fast this can process. Per second, you can consume seven point something. There, six of these. Two, three, four, five, six. Out, and this one is good. And we'll do some power inside. That's going to be right there. This is almost like more of a masterclass thing here. How is this not matching? They should be, oh, because I didn't place it correctly. It has to be overlapping there. And then that one overlapping here. Then it'll be fine. And, okay. Underground, oops. Underground. Underground. And that one is done. This one will probably need to spread out there. Actually, let's just take these out. We just need two of these. Mm, I'm going to take this out because it's the easiest place to place it there and there. So I'm not doing a sloppy design here because I'm sloppy about this sequ this series, but I'm doing it because I feel that uranium is not really worth optimizing. All of this is now consuming 92, so that's good. Here. And this one will then go into a belt where it's just splitting out into one and into the other. And all I need to do is for this is just build a gigantic storage. I'm going to make it not logistic storage because then it kind of gets entangled with the other part. And this part, that's six here. Yes, that's the sort of normal silly thing here, silly pattern we have here. And I'm going to get the other one. Yep. And what I need to do is take take that into this part where I'll now not have my here. And I'll just, for good measure, I will destroy all of this. How? I don't have anything to shoot with. This is embarrassing. And they keep going. All right, I'm going to cut you out there. Uranium. There. This part will be... Well, I think we're gonna have plenty of space here. Uh, let's see, which way is what? They're actually opposite. They're entirely opposite of what I want. That's okay. It happens. other side get these in how did that end up being so close here yeah so what we are gonna get from this is just an absolute insane amount. So this goes out on the outside belt, so that actually should go away with this. It should be just going like that. Here. That one, and I just need this uh, hooked up so that it's ready. And I'm gonna take these 16 that we have already produced, and this here. 
So this will, and I'm going to let it sort of slowly just uh, fill up what it needs. And then this will be our actual storage of this. And how much do you want? Well, not much, to be honest. Basically, when you come through this part, all you need to do is put it into a box or sorry, into one of these things, which is affected by some beacons. This will be making the uranium and productivity in here and it's going to make enough uranium for all of it the only thing this one is missing is some iron that's going to be processed so we're going to bring in oh dear this is so silly uh let's just take a look at how fast this one is going all right how fast is this going this is taking three iron per second so if i need three iron per second we're going to get a few modules i'm just going to leech these modules here this is the worst kind of hack that you could possibly imagine to have in a base <laughs> that is delivering this but i mean sorry to say there's really no reason not to and this one will i think th three must be enough it's more than enough so let's make four so what do you guys think is this like too much of a hack or is it uh, just a justifiable amount of hacking considering well it's the uranium processing And then here I'm sitting there waiting for a reply. That's probably not going to be right now. It's one off. Look at that. One off. Don't care. No one will notice. There. That's going to be a full belt. That's going to give us this one. And lo and behold, the last ingredient. And we will now have whatever we need here so nothing will go through yet except uh, this one is not going through anywhere there and there good it doesn't need to be on both sides but it is now going in how much does this one have 27 something passed by I'll just feed the first one and all we need to now wait is just getting enough of these so that this one kickstarts once this one starts it will start the other ones and it's good that's it and that will stack up to one one of these i could stack it up to more but at this point i have to say what i've said a few times before it just doesn't make sense this is way over scaling what we need hopefully you can use this part because it is by far the best one i've made uh, the fact that it's 12 beacons it's no modules uh, sorry 12 beacons so full modules full productivity it's belted it's no circuit it's high throughput it's very 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 tidable so this one i might just uh oh no i can't even invent it anymore cool yeah so with this is uh, i i'm kind of inclined to say silliness we are going to wrap this uh, series up or not this series but this episode what we're going to do in the next episode is actually going to be uh hold on is that yeah, we don't need to stack up anything. We don't need a buffer at all on this. No, we just need to barely get out. Yeah, what we're going to do in the next one is start designing the nuclear power plants so that they can be even like this. And then we can stamp it down close to some water and then we can deal with it from there. Cool. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you didn't like it, be sure to yell at me in the comment section. That is perfectly okay. This is the part of the game that I feel is a bit more, a bit too silly. So, um... So very hard for me to take any optimization serious, but I mean, what I've done here, it's going to work forever and ever and ever and can give us 25 gigawatts of power. No problem. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. As always, stay effective.